cash dividends, stock dividends, and stock splits. Let's start with cash dividends. Let's assume that on November 18, 2000 X1, the board of directors decided to declare dividends to shareholders. The business has 200,000 common shares issued and outstanding. This date is called the declaration date. The board of directors decided to distribute 10 cents cash dividends per common share. Since there are 200,000 common shares outstanding, the amount of dividends is equal to 200,000 shares multiplied by 10 cents, which is $20,000. The board is to distribute such dividends on January 5th, 2000X2 to shareholders who own the shares on December 10th, 2000X1. December 10th is known as the date of record, while January 5th is the date of payment. What is important about these dates? The declaration date is important because on that date a liability is created. As soon as the board declares dividends, the business is liable to pay them. An entry is required to recognize such a liability as follows. Debit retained earnings or dividends and credit dividends payable for $20,000. It is to be noted that dividends payable is a current liability account. No entries are required on the date of record. The only important issue is to get the list of shareholders who own the shares on that date. The importance of the shareholders list is that the business will know to whom it will pay the dividends. So, dividends will be paid to whoever owns a share on December 10th. The date of payment is important as the business will pay the dividends in cash. This transaction must be recorded. Dividends payable is debited to reduce the liability and credit cash for $20,000. Let's compare the shareholders' equity section on the statement of financial position before and after the cash dividends distribution. Common shares are not affected. Let's assume that returned earnings had a balance of $90,000. After the dividends distribution, retained earnings decreased to $70,000 and accordingly, total shareholders' equity is reduced by $20,000 as well. Now let's speak about stock dividends. If the board of directors is willing to distribute dividends, but there is no liquidity to pay in cash, they might think of distributing the dividends in the form of shares. Sometimes, even if there is liquidity, they may want to retain cash to grow the business as against borrowing funds from a lending institution after paying out dividends. Let's assume the board of directors decided to distribute 10% stock dividends. So they will distribute 20,000 shares. This number is calculated by multiplying 200,000 shares by 10%. Let's also assume that the share is currently traded for $2 per share in the marketplace. This implies that the business will distribute the equivalent of $40,000 as dividends in the form of shares. On the declaration date, this is recognized by debiting retained earnings and crediting stock dividends distributable for $40,000. On January 5th, the business is to issue new shares to shareholders who were on record on December 10th, 2000 X1. The business has to reduce the equity by debiting stock dividends distributable by $40,000 and then add $40,000 to common shares. Let's compare the shareholders' equity section on the statement of financial position before and after the shares' dividends distribution. The retained earnings is reduced by $40,000 and is added to common shares. Common shares' balance is now $240,000. But notice that the total shareholders' equity is unchanged. What happened is that we reallocated the account of dividends among the shareholders' equity section. One account, which is the retained earnings, decreased, and another shareholder's equity account, which is the common shares, increased. So the net effect shows no change in total shareholder's equity. Let's now speak about stock splits. Sometimes, the business finds that the shares are too expensive in the stock exchange, resulting in a decrease in the shares trading activity. This makes the shares illiquid and investors do not generally prefer the situation. Hence, the board, in order to reduce the shares price, 
they may decide to split them. They could decide to split them in any ratio such as 1 to 2 or 1 to 5 or 1 to 10, etc. In our example, let's assume that they decided to split them in the ratio of 1 to 4. So if we visualize the share as a pie and each share is worth $40 in the books, it will be divided into four shares each for $10. No journal entries are required. Only a note that states that stock are split in this ratio and the number of common shares are increased. As a result of the split, the market price per share declines, helping investors to trade, that is, buy and sell, more actively.